So you want to become a software developer, eh? Well, are you going to go to boot camp? Are you going to go back to school? Are you going to do this on your own and be a self-taught programmer? Well, you're going to have to decide because the options that you have in front of you are very different. There's the structured, you know, school option or boot camp that's going to cost you money though, and then there's doing it on your own, which is going to cost you a lot of time, a lot of heartache, and you're going to have to figure out how to swim in a vast ocean that is very complex and it's can be very frustrating at times, but Whatever you decide to do, you have to decide early on, or maybe you are early on in your journey now and you're trying to figure it out. Well, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through what I've seen both from my experience as a self-taught programmer, as well as my friends and colleagues' experience of going to boot camp versus going to school versus doing it on your own. So we're gonna go ahead and dive in there. Now, if you're wondering who I am, who, who's this guy talking here? I'm Andy Sterkowitz. I'm a self-taught programmer. I actually taught myself to code back in 2014. I landed my first job in 2015. And right now I mentor and coach people who are looking to make the career switch into programming. So uh, this channel is really dedicated to teaching people the skills or understanding how to learn, also productivity hacks, as well as how to land that first job as a self-taught programmer. So I highly recommend hitting the subscribe button below. Also make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notifications anytime I put on a new video. Okay, so let's start off with talking about college. So maybe you have the option of going to school or going back to school and getting a four year degree in something like computer science. The first thing I have to tell you that you should be very wary of is that coming out with a degree or even if you come out with some sort of certificate from boot camp or something like that, that that degree does not guarantee a job on the other end. And this is really comes from a lot of anecdotal uh, stories that I've seen, right? So stories not only from my positions that I've been in where I've seen my bosses hire software developers, but also from friends and colleagues in the field. The one thing that's pretty common is that while a degree can tell you a little bit about somebody, maybe their work ethic and how quickly they can learn potentially, is not necessarily the thing that stands out in somebody's resume. So if you think that just by going to school, that alone is going to get you in the foot in the door at some company, it's not necessarily the case. There are so many different metrics now that companies use to hire somebody that that's just one of many parts. It may get you into the interview process a little bit easier, but even that's not guaranteed. From there, you have to also understand that there are many different types of boot camps and schools, meaning that really to me, schools come on many different levels, right? So you got the highest levels, which maybe you can consider like a Stanford or some of the Ivy League schools down to the lowest level, which I would consider like DeVry University, which by the way, I went to school after I, I got my first job. I graduated two years after that. Um, it was not worth it. I spent a lot of money on student loans and their curriculum was awful. I could teach the courses 10 times better than what they were doing. And in fact, most of the courses online in Udemy do a 2,000 times better job than what they're doing. Of course, now if you go up to higher levels, like I said, a Stanford, if you're getting a computer science degree from Stanford, that has a lot more weight than something like DeVry. So you have to weigh all those things in there. Now, obviously, you also have to understand that if to get to something like Stanford or an Ivy League school, it will take a lot more money, and also it's gonna be harder to get into. So everything lives on that spectrum. So you're basically betting on that you hopefully can get into the one of the best schools you possibly can, and even then, that's not always going to work out for you. So keep that in mind. The last thing I'd say about formal education is one of the benefits, one of the reasons why people really like it is that they get structure. And a school or a boot camp will provide you structure. They'll tell you what to learn, when to learn, it and they'll also have assessments about how to know that you're progressing. And that can feel great because it's like you want to feel that you're progressing towards something and if you have that it's much easier to follow that path. However, you always have to keep in mind that any curriculum that is created, any sort of structure that is created by anyone it's arbitrary just to a large degree. I mean, people certainly create a structure in a boot camp, let's say, and they iterate that over time to make it better, but ultimately there are different ways to approach learning. The reason I know this is because I taught myself how to code. I went to a you know formal school to learn this after I got my first job, and I can tell you that is not the, the structure that is everything. It's how you go about learning, how you go about absorbing the information and using it. And so structure can certainly help you with that, but it's not necessarily required. You can create your own structure and that can be work just as well. So school can provide that for you, boot camps can provide that structure, but keep in mind that that structure is not necessarily the one way to do things. Also, by the way, what I, I think people do like about school and boot camps is that when they shell over thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of dollars, is that does give them that accountability factor. Like it gives them skin in the game where they're like, okay, I really have to put my game face on here. I can't mess this up. Where when they're doing this on their own, 
realm when they're doing the self-taught path, they kind of don't take it seriously because they don't have skin in the game. Okay, so you, let's say you thought about school, you thought about going to boot camp, and you're like, I want to try out this self-taught thing. I want to see if I can do this on the, my own. I want to have that title of self-taught developer. Awesome, but let's also talk about the realities of it. So the first reality of being a self-taught developer is that there is a ton of information out there, a ton of different paths you can follow, and that often leads to information overload. And most people, when they first start self-teaching, like this is amazing, I'd buy a course up, but when that course ends, they're like, where the hell do I go? What the hell do I do? I'm not even sure how to approach this. And that can lead them to get very discouraged and very frustrated. So you have to understand that if you're gonna do that self-taught approach, I would highly recommend making sure to reach out to anyone in your social network who can mentor you. So if you know any software developers who can just give you tips along the way, it's gonna make your life 100 times easier than trying to figure out on your own. You can absolutely figure out it out on your own, but it's gonna take more time because you have to learn it basically from scratch, right? You have to make all the mistakes on your own, and that just leads to more time. Another disadvantage of the self-taught approach is that there's not really a built-in accountability aspect to it inherently, meaning that when you go to school, when you plop over a bunch of money, it's a little easier to say, okay, I gotta show up today, I gotta make sure I'm doing my homework on the weekends and putting in those extra hours. When you do the self-taught approach, a lot of people kind of just casually approach it, they buy a few courses on whatever website or they buy a few books and they kind of go through it, but they don't really have that locked in, like I gotta do this approach because they maybe spent less than $100 on everything altogether. And so there's not that inherent accountability for self-taught programmers. So you have to really design that into whatever you're gonna do. You have to figure out, okay, how am I going to make myself accountable every single day? Am I gonna join some sort of group where people are gonna be keeping me accountable? Am I gonna give a friend you know, $1,000 and say, if I don't study for 40 hours a week for you know this time frame, then I'm gonna give you this my money to some political opponent that I hate or something like that. You have to have some sort of accountability built into it. From there, let's talk about the benefits of being a self-taught programmer and going that route. So the first thing that really stands out in my mind is that you can spend a lot less money. So there isn't gonna be that tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars of investment to get into programming. You could potentially teach yourself and really, I mean, you could potentially spend a couple hundred bucks, or maybe even a thousand dollars, or even if you spent two or three thousand dollars, that's still a lot less than you would be spending if you had to get out a loan for tens of thousands of dollars for some of these boot camps and schools. So the potential for spending a lot less money is there. The second thing that I think is a huge advantage is that you can do this on your own time. So you don't have to attend class regularly. You can figure that if you have a full-time job, if you have a family, I know a lot of people who are doing it like that, you can fit it in, you can plan it on your own. Another thing that I really like, and this is the main reason why I think if you're considering self-taught approach that you should really do it, is that it helps you to understand how to learn. So learning is a skill, it's called metacognition, like learning how to learn. And to understand that process, to understand how to learn anything will be valuable no matter what you do. In other words, there's no skill out there that you can't learn once you learn to become a programmer to a higher degree. Here's the thing, as a programmer, to be successful in this, you have to be a good, like you have to be a quick learner. You have to understand the learning process. If you don't pick that up, then it's really hard to have a long career because the field changes so quickly, like technology changes so fast. And one of the hardest things about being a software developer is you have to stay current to those trends. If you're falling behind, then it's going, it's possible you get left behind and you may not have the viability as a programmer, meaning you won't be able to get jobs as easily as you once did. So you have to be able to learn quickly. So from the get-go, if you teach yourself this, if you go through that process, it's not easy, it can be very grueling at times, it can set you up for life as a programmer because you'll understand that process of how to learn. Now, before we go here, I just wanna reiterate this, that the self-taught approach, while it sounds great, it is hard. There is a lot of challenges that come your way as a self-taught programmer. When you do this on your own, there's gonna be a lot of self-doubt, there's gonna be a lot of uncertainty, but if you can learn to deal with that, it will make you much stronger moving forward. I know a lot of people who went through this process and it changed them permanently, it changed them in a good way because again, they were able to deal with uncertainty better, they were able to figure things out in their their own. So they're the type of people who can start a business. They can, they're the type of people who can learn a new skill or new career if they need to later on. So I hope this video has helped clarify a few things. Again, these are from my experience. I hope you understand that I never went to a boot camp. I went to school later on after I got my first job. And really what I know is self-taught, but I don't think it's for everybody. I think it's for people who are curious about it and who have done it and see that they can enjoy it. So I hope this video has helped. By the way, guys, if you are looking to go the self-taught approach and you're doing that right now, maybe you've been doing this for a few months and you really want to make this career change, I highly recommend checking out my mentorship 
mentorship program where you can work with me one-on-one -on -one to get your career moving forward and get started as a programmer. So if you're interested in finding out more about my mentorship program, what you are gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna book a free career strategy session with me on that call, what I'm gonna do with you is I'm gonna ask you questions about number one, what your goals are, so what you're trying to do. I'm also gonna ask you about what you're struggling with, so what you have found are obstacles that are in your way. And after we have that discussion, I'll know whether mentorship is a good fit. I'll be happy to explain what it looks like and we can go from there. I will leave a link in the description below here where you can book that call. I recommend to jump on that call as soon as possible, by, by the way, because the appointment spots fill up very quickly. So you, you're gonna to wanna to jump on that as soon as possible. Other than that, that's all I've got for now. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, peace out, guys.